First story. I divorced my wife after she was assaulted and admitted to the ER while working as a sex worker, using our friend as her pimp behind my back. Now, five years later, my son had an accident, and she came back, acting like nothing happened and wanting to reconcile. My ex and I met in college. She was the most beautiful girl I had ever seen. She always had a crowd of guys following her around. I had some classes with her over the four years, but I never pursued her because, well, all the other guys. One day after class, she asked if I would study with her, and the rest is history. So we married. Starting our careers in the same industry, different companies. A male-dominated industry. I found immediate success while she struggled. She changed jobs in the first year. She continued to struggle. In the third year, she became pregnant with our first son. She worked through the pregnancy. A few weeks after giving birth, in a routine physical, her doctor asked to do a biopsy of her cervix. The results came back as precancerous cells were found. The doctor advised if we wanted more children to do it as quick as possible, as this will progress and a hysterectomy will be needed eventually. So when she was up to it, she became pregnant again. She gave birth again to a boy within a year of each other. Afterward, more tests were done, and different doctors advised us to do the procedure now, as we should not wait. With two babies, still infants, she had her procedure done. She was heartbroken that she was done having children as we had wanted a large family. She poured herself into being a great mother, and she was. She became a psalm. She took care of everything at home. Meanwhile, my career was moving along. I was offered a position with another company with a large salary bump. Life is good. When the boys went off to school, she volunteered there and was a fixture there. I should mention that we had close friends we went to school with. A and B, we saw each other often. They started their family about the time we did. They have one son. The families went on vacations to gather dinners, outings we were best of friends. After the son was born, A, the mother, went back to work and was very successful. B had a good job also until about 2001, when his job was eliminated. He struggled to find work in his field, as the economy back then really affected his field. So the decision was he would be a sod while looking for work where we lived, as they did not want to move. The X and B did things together with kids. When the kids were all in school, they still hung out. You can now guess they had an affair. This story, I know, is long but not over. After about a year of this hot ass ex in the morning, B asked my ex if she and I had ever talked about a threesome. It was all fantasy talk with us, as we were still having a great, if not slowing down, sexual relationship. B had a friend he wanted to bring into the bedroom with them. The ex agreed. The day came, and this guy C came over to B's house. He took his suit off as X and B got warmed up, so they had their threesome. Afterward the guy told them that he usually had to pay for his X, so he left a couple hundred dollar bills and asked X if he could have a one-on-one -on -one with X. She told him she needed to think about that and B would get back to him. Eventually C recommended someone else, and a business was born. Eventually, B was re-employed and had to leave X on her own. She used a different cell phone. She rented out a storage unit and made it her closet office. She used the money to buy outfits her clientele requested. She even bought a car. She did not want her minivan spotted at a hotel. The guys had to pay for a room at a nice hotel. She kept the car at the storage unit. Everything was in cash. She never brought the money into our lives that I know of. Though we would send the kids to different day camps during the summer. She claimed she tightened up our budget to pay for it. She only worked during school hours. She always picked the boys up at school. On a few rare occasions. B would pick them up and keep them until she got home. Our home life never suffered. I admit I was working a ton and moving up the ladder. The weekends were our family time. As X was generally on the weekends, I thought because of my work life, this worked best. Most nights we would cuddle on the couch watching TV. Almost done. 2016 comes along. We have one son in college, the other a senior in high school. I get a call from B. X is in the hospital. He was vague but said she was hurt badly. I rushed to the hospital. My wife is hooked to a bunch of machines. They have already cleaned her up and taken her for x-rays. She has a broken jaw, broken nose, fractured orbital bone, and possible concussion. She will make it, but there will be a long road ahead. A police officer was finishing up and left. I of course want to know what happened. She was crying, talking gibberish through her sobs and pain medications. A nurse said I should let her rest. They were moving her to a room soon. She handed me a bag with her clothes. I looked in and asked if these were hers because she never wears heels and the dress was unfamiliar. 
The nurse said this is what they brought from the hotel room, so they pushed me out of the room. I called my sons to let them know. Later that night, when the fog of the drugs was wearing off, I got some of the story. She drifted off again. I had my youngest son sit in with her, and I called B. Why did he call me? How did he know before me? What's going on? So B came clean about what my wife was up to, leaving out the affair and his involvement. I was devastated. We eventually get her home after surgery on her jaw. The nose would wait. She convulsed at home. As she got stronger, I got the whole story. I called A and told of the affair and B as a pimp. She threw B out. As she got on her feet, I told her we were done. I asked her to move out. She moved in with B. I got the divorce rolling. I am sitting here five years divorced. I still love her. It is as if she had died. The grief is unbearable. My boys know what she did. I have not spoken to her since she left. Update. I originally posted a few weeks ago. You can check my profile. I did not update, as there really was not anything to say. Until last night. I received a call from my oldest son, R, who is out of town for the holiday weekend. A friend called him to tell him his brother, S, had been in a motorcycle accident. He was with him, but did not see the accident as he was riding ahead. I rushed to the hospital ER. They were cleaning S and were sending him for x-rays. I was told to have a seat and the doctor would be out. A few minutes later, as I had my head leaning back and my eyes closed, I heard my name. I look up, and my ex is standing in the doorway. She asked for news. I said I was waiting. She asked if she could sit with me. I invited her to a seat near me. I have not seen her in five years since the divorce happened. I did not know what to expect. I assumed that she would be disfigured from her beating. She was not all, though her face was not as flawless as I remember. The one thing I did see was that her eyes no longer sparkled. This was a feature I never got enough of. Even with a mask on, her eyes did not look the same. Funny what you noticed. When she smiled, her face used to just light up. I imagine she just has a resting bee face now. Anyway, while waiting, we had a nervous catch-up talk. She mentioned she liked the landscaping I did and how the plants now mature really look nice. This tells me she has been by the house where I have no idea where she lives, and my sons were told never to mention her to me. During and after the divorce, I tried to purge any remembrance of her. I replaced the bushes in the yard, as it was something she had planned and planted. I did not mention that the inside of the house was redone also. I even ripped out a wall. I had a construction dumpster in the driveway for many months. She asked how I was doing. I don't know why, but I was honest that I had put myself at a standstill by working too much. However, I recently went to a therapist and joined a gym. I also have taken up bike riding. She volunteered that she no longer. Just left it there unsaid. She stayed with B for a couple months. She also was seeing a counselor who encouraged her to take some college courses in her degree field. That took a couple years. She is now employed full-time. She said she has dated minimally, leaving the statement open for me to answer. I figured the boys were keeping her up to date on me, so I had nothing to add. The doctor appeared and discussed the extent of injuries. The most serious was to his foot and ankle pinned under the bike when it went down. They had scheduled him for surgery today. Everything is good. He just needs to heal and rehab. So he will be in until at least tomorrow, depending on his head injury. A slight concussion. I offered my house to stay as I have the room and can work from home. We will finalize that today, although that means his mother will want to visit. That will be a healing process for me. Update. My son is healing well. He still has a way to go. We have decided he will stay here while consulting. He wants to go back to work next week. His boss is setting up something so he can work from home. I barely get him in the back seat of my SUV, as he has to stretch out. It would be a nightmare driving him to work and back every day. Everyone has been asking about the ex coming over. I leave when she comes. I go to the gym or a bike ride. My oldest son has tried to have a sit-down dinner with the four of us, but I shut it down. She has been very gracious. She has not tried to force anything. She comes over and sits with our son. She will cook dinner for them. She brings groceries when she does cook. Sometimes his friends come over, and it gets a bit rowdy for me. But he forgets about his problem when there are visitors. To say we never talk would be untrue. Our conversations do not stray from our sons or their lives. Update. This will be my last update. My son is healing nicely, the doctor says. He has a way to go with physical therapy. He is hobbling around. Still at my house. Working from home. 
I have returned to the office to give him some space. Now the ex has started what many of you have said. She is doing little things around the house. My son is not all that tidy. So she is cleaning after him, doing his dishes. She will make a meal for him and always leaves a plate for me. I tell my son that can be his lunch the next day. She asked me the other night if I would be interested in going out to dinner tonight. As my son has some friends coming over. I told her no. A little later she mentioned us getting a meal just to clear the air. Again, I told her no. I finally said. We ended long ago because of your actions. It took me a long time to get over what was lost. I do not intend to revisit a relationship with you. She said okay. She understood where we stood. I did say I did not have a problem with her coming over to visit our son until he gets back to his place. I thanked her for cleaning up. But it's not necessary. Thank you all for the encouragement and kind words. But I will make it through this. My heart has hardened. Second story. My wife cheated on me with her friend while we were dating and recorded their intimacy. She now claims she did it to make sure I'm serious about our relationship, now accusing me of being stuck in the past, so I divorced her. I'm holed up in my room in a ski chalet while everyone else in our group is still in the village. I'm a little drunk and feeling extremely f ed up about this situation right now. My wife, Suzanne, and I met online four years ago. We'd both had some bad relationships, and we both wanted something serious. Early on, she told me that she was tired of guys bailing after the relationship turned physical and that she wanted to wait on that front, which I was not just okay with but thought was smart. My most successful relationship before her was with someone where we waited a few months, and I appreciated getting to build a friendship to see if we clicked on an emotional level. Suzanne also told me that she understood if I still wanted to date around during that time and didn't expect me to be exclusive until we both explicitly agreed on it. I told her that I wasn't one to try and fight a war on two fronts, I was serious about making it work with one person. Now, up until last night, I thought that she'd felt the same she never once mentioned seeing other people while we were dating, and based on the way she talked about wanting to build an emotional connection, I assumed dumbly, I guess, that she was only seeing me. We're on this trip with three other couples and her friend, Josh. I've always liked him. He and I have had some long convos smoking weed and talking about life and work we're both in tech. I've always gotten the vibe that he's a kind, caring person who goes out of his way to help his friends. He's a big advocate for people doing therapy and talks openly about what he's working on. This is where it gets upsetting for me. Last night we got back from skiing and we were all exhausted. I went downstairs to start chopping veggies to help another of the couples cook the group dinner. Suzanne took a shower and I chopped and chatted for like 30 minutes. I came back upstairs to bring Suzanne some wine and I heard her and Josh chatting in our room. No big deal. I walk in, and Suzanne is in a towel with her leg up on the bed, putting on lotion, talking about her job. It wasn't exactly a compromising position, but it struck me as possibly intimate. If she moved a bit one way or another, she'd be giving him a view. She said hi to me, kept putting on lotion, and then grabbed the wine. Totally nonchalant. Josh said it was his turn to shower and left. Sitting here now, I wish to God that I'd just kept my effing mouth shut. But I said it was a little surprising that she was putting on lotion in a towel with Josh in the room. She said she didn't even realize because she was just caught up in her story and went on autopilot. I've always known her to be a self-conscious person. She wears swimsuits that cover a lot of her skin because she doesn't like to feel gawked at. So I was getting the tingles in the back of my brain that something was off. I said something like, You're usually so quick to cover up around people. And she said, I guess I just know Josh so well that it didn't register. When she said that, there was just something, abrasive, annoyed. It came out more sharply than I would have expected. I should have dropped it, but I was two glasses of wine in myself and said, Whoa, did I strike a nerve? And she said, Let's just go eat, but now clearly agitated and doing a fake smile thing. At this point I could feel my stomach get a little queasy and like I was heading toward a world of pain. I shut the door and said I could tell something was wrong. She said I needed to trust her and that there was nothing going on between her and Josh. I said I never imagined or implied that there was, so it was really weird that she felt like she had to make that clear. Now I was feeling gross and suspicious, so I straight up said, I can tell you're uncomfortable right now. Either you tell me what's up or I go ask Josh. What happened next was the most uncomfortable hour of my life. I need more socks for this. She said that she and Josh had a sexual history, and that it really wasn't any of my business. I said that since he's still in our lives, then I deserve to know the context. 
She said there was no context other than he was someone she felt safe with when she wasn't partnered. And they would have SX now and then. I asked when was the last time they slept together. And she danced around it before saying, before you and I were exclusive. I said that was a fuzzy answer because I was exclusive with her from the time of our first date. She said that she never had SX with him after the two of us had SX. I asked if she had SX with him during the six months between our first date and when we had SX, and she said she had. I instantly felt like throwing up and started yelling a bunch of SHT, I don't really remember. She just had the most pissed off and disgusted look on her face the whole time. I finally calmed down a little and asked her to please give me the full story, timelines, etc. She wasn't fully open, and I had to keep digging to get more information. And it was a very non-linear conversation. But here's what I pieced together. About 10 years ago, Suzanne's friend Rose, now 40F, also on this trip with us had gotten out of a string of short, disappointing relationships. Rose started having SX with Josh regularly in a FWB kind of way while still hitting the apps. Apparently the arrangement with Josh made it easier for her to forego his ex in her dating life, which she found helpful for vetting guys to see if they were serious. Eventually she did find the man she is still married to, Eric, 38M. Seeing the success that Rose had, two other friends got into the same arrangement with Josh and voila. They found serious guys as well. A modern effing miracle. How about that? Suzanne said she talked to Josh about giving it a try, and he was super good about boundaries, and making sure the focus was on her finding a long-term partner, and even gave her advice about guys she was seeing. I said, so you would go on dates with me. I'd drop you off, give you a kiss on the cheek. You'd go F Josh, and then talk about our relationship. She said that was a crass way of putting it, and that he was so supportive, and made it easier for her and me to focus on what matters more. I stayed on the high to bed, and told people I was sick and couldn't ski today. I've just been sipping Macklin 12 and writing this in between naps. Feelings I'm having right now. Sadness, betrayal, jealousy, inferiority, drunk, more sad, and notes of pissed off and wanting to flee. But we are in effing Canada, and I don't even know the quickest way to get back home. Do I try to work this out? Do I run? Do I even have a reason to be upset? The drunker I get, the less angry I get, and I can see her side of it more easily. TLDR. Wife was banging her friend instead of me when we started dating. She claims because it helped her to not have his ex too early in a relationship. We are on a ski trip with the friend, and I want to run away from my life. Edit. I'm very hungover but reading through all the comments. To clarify a few things, one. Only one other woman who has slept with Josh Rose is on the trip. The other two couples were my friends first, and I don't know Josh well. Sorry to those telling me I should drop a huge bombshell at dinner. Two. The reason it's hard to leave is because we all drove over the border together in a van, and we are deep in the mountains not a lot of transit options. If I decide to leave, it will be a massive pain in the arse. 3. I don't have any reason to suspect an ongoing thing between Josh and my wife. I've never seen a hint of flirtation from either of them. Even when I walked in on them last night, they seemed completely casual, like I would be with one of my guy friends. But I also never suspected she could compartmentalize her feelings the way she apparently did. So I think I need to be open to all possibilities at this point. I'm going to go skiing this afternoon with just my buddy Ryan and see if he has any advice. And I will be abstaining from alcohol the rest of the trip, as many have suggested. Update 4 over 1. Thanks everyone for the wide array of perspectives on this. You've given me a lot to consider that I would not have otherwise. I particularly appreciate hearing women's points of view on this. The consensus from them seems to be that the arrangement with Josh made strategic sense but that Suzanne should have disclosed things much earlier. I went skiing yesterday and today after deciding that I'm going to stay the rest of the trip. I've been looking forward to this all year, and we might actually get some snow soon. I've been hanging with two of my good guy friends for the most part. Suzanne has asked if we can talk, but I told her I'm not ready and I just want to focus on skiing. I'm pretty sure she's alerted Josh because he has been standoffish. Whatever. The feeling that is currently strongest is one of broken trust. Several commenters noted that the language Suzanne used made her technically within her rights to have the arrangement with Josh. The question in my mind that I keep asking is, if I had known about Josh from the get-go, what would have changed? I certainly don't think I would have continued the relationship for six months without pursuing other options at the same time. Suzanne knew that I was only pursuing her. She had all of my attention because I wanted to make something work for once. I also can't shake the feeling that our relationship would have developed more quickly if Josh had not been around. 
I spent some time last night looking at old texts and emails from our early days, about three months in. I started crying because I remembered just how smitten I was with her. By then I was really starting to see a future with her. But now I read her responses differently what seemed like cute. Coy replies feel like apathy in retrospect. It robs a lot of the magic from my memories, and I just feel empty. I'm still not sure how I'm going to handle things, but I'm very seriously considering talking to Eric one-on-one -on -one before the trip ends to see what things look like from his experience. We're here until Thursday, so there's time. Until then, I'm just going to skim my brains out and pray for snow. Update. Hey everyone. I know it's been forever since my first post, but SHT has been so crazy that I honestly forgot that I'd even posted on Reddit until the other night when I was talking with a buddy and we started getting into it. So here's my long overdue update on the situation. After my last post in April, we made it through the rest of the trip. Josh kept mostly to himself. Suzanne and I had a couple of superficial conversations, but I wasn't ready to really talk to her yet. The skiing was fantastic, even though the snow kind of sucked. I felt burnt out physically and emotionally by the time we left, but my plan was just to head back home and continue working things out once we were both in a familiar environment. We got up early to pack the van and drove to a little diner for breakfast before hitting the road. Everyone else seemed to be having a good time chatting and recapping the trip, while I just kind of zoned out and tried to distract myself. Finally someone took the hint that I didn't want to talk, so I rode shotgun up front, but alone in my thoughts most of the way. When we got to border control, we waited for 15-20 minutes in line, and then no big surprise, they waved us over for an inspection since we were a bunch of 30-ish people packing a van with US plates. We all stood around outside in the cold while they went through our bags. Eventually, they pulled Josh aside, and he looked very uncomfortable. Well, it turns out Josh is the dip SHT that he has weed on him. Once they found his stash, they asked him to admit if he had anything else, and he said no. They let him know that because he'd said no, they'd have to do a full search and break down the car. And this is where it gets ugh. The BP brings us inside and puts us in separate rooms, couples together, and Josh in his own room. The walls are basically cardboard, so Suzanne and I are standing around awkwardly staring at our feet, and I can hear Josh's interrogation pretty well. I hear an agent ask him to open up his laptop. He refused to do so and said he didn't effing consent. His words. It got real quiet for a moment, and then another agent said something like, I advise you to rethink your position here. It's going to be much harder for you if you refuse to comply. Josh admitted that he had some personal files up that he wanted to close before he opened the laptop. BP says, nope, that's not going to happen. There was some rustling, and then as clear as effing day, we all heard adultery sounds coming through the wall. Loud adultery sounds. Here's the thing. I caught Suzanne wincing and looking away immediately. Then I distinctly recognized Suzanne's voice in the background of Josh's interrogation, making all those effing noises. Clearly Josh had been watching some vintage content of them having SX before we left the chalet. I called Suzanne out on it right there, but she tried to shush me. Meanwhile, I'm pressing my ear to the wall as best I can, and then I heard Josh scrambling to turn off the video. Suzanne later admitted that she knew he had videos of them, but apologized for never mentioning it, because she didn't want to dig up the past. Eventually, miraculously, they let us go without further hassle, though Josh lost all his weed in the process, which is a small consolation. I was too pissed to keep riding with Suzanne, so after we crossed the border, I told them I was feeling really sick and just needed to grab the first greyhound out of town and take it straight to the nearest airport. Suzanne didn't argue, which was surprising. Fast forward to both of us finally back home. The whole vibe was so tense and uncomfortable, and I just kind of unloaded everything I'd been feeling at once. No real structure, just a lot of emotion and confusion. I asked her point blank when those videos were made, and she doubled down on her story that it was all from when they were F buddies, and that nothing recent had happened between them. I still felt like I was going to throw up every time I thought about it. I asked her if other copies existed, and after a lot of back and forth and arguing and tears, she finally admitted that she had copies herself, but swore up and down that she only kept them because she forgot she even had them. I demanded to see the evidence to prove that she wasn't lying, and Suzanne said they were on a USB drive in her office. We went together to get it. To be honest, I was half expecting some crazy gaslighting attempt, like saying she couldn't find the USB or something. But no. She handed it right over then left the house. I think she understood that I needed to watch them alone, on my own terms. And yeah, I wish I could unsee that stuff. From my careful investigation Aka torturing myself by watching, 
It did seem like none of the videos were recent. Based on her hair length in some of the videos, I figured out the rough timeline. Her hair is short now, and in those videos, it was longer, like how she wore it before we met. So the logical part of my brain is pretty convinced she's being honest about not effing him since we got serious. But that doesn't make it any easier. Honestly, what upsets me almost as much is how enthusiastic she seemed with Josh compared to what I've seen and experienced with her. I'm not saying ours ex-life was bad, I used to think it was amazing. But seeing those videos just messes with your head. She was like a completely different person. Anyway, it turned into more fighting. I told her that even if this had all happened before we were exclusive, it felt like she manipulated the situation, knowing I'd never have done the same to her. She apologized again, but I could tell she was just tired of repeating herself and getting nowhere with me. After our last big blowout, we stopped talking for a while other than updates on personal business. It was like living with a ghost. By early summer, I knew I couldn't do it anymore. So I left. There wasn't any epic fight. I packed up while she was visiting her mom and moved in with a friend for a bit. And now I'm in a cheap apartment across town. She reached out a few times, but honestly, I think she knew it was dead. We're technically still married, but separated and working through the divorce details. We're keeping it as civil as possible. There's not a huge rush on either end to finalize things. TLDR. My wife and I finished the trip and drove home. Border Patrol detained us and found weed on Josh. During his interrogation, adultery sounds leaked through the walls, and I recognized Suzanne's voice. I confronted her. She admitted to having copies of content she and Josh made. I watched the videos to confirm none were recent, but they still traumatized me. I couldn't get over the betrayal and mixed feelings, so I left her. Now in the process of getting divorced, focusing on rebuilding my life. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.